Hi, so in this video on idiomatic Python, I want to talk about tuple unpacking. So this is a very easy concept. However, it's one that far too often I don't see it being used, or at the very least, then not being used properly. Essentially, we can unpack the elements of a tuple into several variables or symbols in a single assignment expression. And I'm sure you've seen this before. Let's do a comma b comma c equals 1 comma 2 comma 3. So the right hand side is the tuple 1 2 3. I don't have parentheses but of course the parentheses is not what defines a tuple it's the commas right that creates the tuple. So the right hand side is a tuple and basically what this assignment is going to do it requires first of all the same number of symbols on this left hand side as we have elements in the tuple on the right hand side and it's going to unpack 1 into a, 2 into b, c into 3. So when we run this assignment, then we get a is equal to that, we get b is equal to 2, and then we get c is equal to 3. Okay. So the left hand side is basically just a comma separated list of symbols. This is not a tuple, this is just syntax. So the left hand side is always going to be a variable name. In this case, we have multiple variable names, so we separate them using commas. And then we have on the right hand side the tuple that we want to do the unpacking with. So yes, you have to have the same number of elements. Now there is something called extended unpacking which uses a star notation but that's not going to be for this video. This video is going to be about how we use this to write more Pythonic code. Now the really important thing to understand with any assignment expression in Python, not just this tuple unpacking, is that the right hand side in an expression, in an assignment expression, is always evaluated completely and fully first. And then the result of that evaluated expression is then used for the assignment itself. So if we write something like this, x equals 1, and a comma b equals x plus 1 and x plus 2, what's actually happening here is that the tuple x plus 1 and x plus 2 is getting created first. So basically it's saying, you know, it's creating this tuple here, like so, right? That's the what it's doing. This is what the right hand side is equal to. I'll put that here. And it's going to evaluate that first. It's going to therefore evaluate to the tuple 2 comma 3 and then it does the assignment and so when we do that we see that a is 2 and b is 3. So why am I really making this point about the right hand side being evaluated first? Well take a look at this code and this is things that you'll see fairly often. You'll see like for example we'll start again with x equals 1 and then I'm going to unpack x and a uh, or I'm going to assign into x and a the unpacking of x plus 1 and x plus 2. So this is not saying x equals x plus 1 and then a equals x plus 2. Not at all. Remember, it evaluates the right-hand side first. What's the right-hand side at this point? x plus 1 is 1 plus 1, so that's 2. And then x plus 2 is 1 plus 2, so that's 3. So this right hand side expression is the tuple 2 comma 3 and then it gets assigned to x and a respectively. It gets unpacked into x and a. So x is 2 and a is 3. This is not at all the same thing as writing x equals 1 and then x equals x plus 1 and then a equals x plus 2. Because if we do that we're of course going to get a totally different result. So x now is 2, just like we had before, but a is 4, because x was changed before we did the assignment here. And as you can see, that's not at all what happened in the unpacking here. The right-hand side is evaluated first. So one of the reasons we use tuple unpacking is when we want to do simultaneous state updates. We want to be able to, you know, make some state update. Maybe x is going to change to something and a is going to change to something, but it's based on an intermediate value of x that we've changed. We don't want that to be used, you know, when we calculate a. We want the original x. Doing this, we maintain that because 
By the time we do x plus 2, x hasn't changed yet because the assignment hasn't happened. So that's what I mean by simultaneous state updates. And I'll show you another example of that. And the first one, the first example of that is variable swapping. Let's say we have these two variables, a equals 1, b equals 2, and we need to swap these two things around. Well, if you come from a more traditional language, then you know that you typically have to use a temporary variable to do the swap. You would do something like this. You would say temporary variable equals a. Then I'm going to make a equal to b. And then I'm going to make b equal to the temporary variable. Because this way, I've now put 1 into temp. Now I update a with 2. And then I need to set b to the original a. Well, I can't use a here because if I used a, I would just have a equals 2 as well. So that's why we use the temporary variable. And when we do that, we end up with a and b swapped, right? It was 1, 2 before. Now it's 2, 1. Now this is not Pythonic. We can use tuple unpacking, which has this simultaneous state update, to do exactly the same thing this way. So we'll start with a equals 1, b equals 2. To swap them around, we'll say a comma b equals b comma a. And Again, because the right-hand side is evaluated fully first, what's the tuple on the right-hand side? 2 comma 1. And then, once that's calculated, then we do the assignment to a and b, 1 and 2, right? So to, that was 1 and 2. Now a is going to be 2 and b is going to be 1. So if we look at the result a and b, you can see we have 2 comma 1. And this is because of not just the unpacking, but the fact that the right-hand side is evaluated fully first. So that's one example of what I mean by simultaneous state update. Now, one way that I see tuples used in what I'm going to say is not Pythonic, and this is my opinion that's shared by many others, but not by all, is sometimes people use tuple unpacking to basically de you know, define variables with their values all on one line instead of splitting it into multiple lines. Let me show you what I mean. Let's say that from math, I'm going to import pi, sine, uh, cosine, and let's say tangent. And then I'm going to set x equal to pi over 3. And then I'm going to write this. I want to create a variable called sine x, and I want to assign to it the sine of x. Then I want to create another variable. Let's call it cosine x, and I'm going to make it cosine x. And then I'll do another one called tan x, and it'll be equal to the tangent of x. Okay, so this is perfectly fine. And what I see some people is that I don't know why, but for some reason they think that it's better to write this sine x, cosine x, tan x equal to sine x, cosine x, and tangent x. Okay, they do that. The effect is exactly the same. We calculate sine, cosine, tan, and then we do the assignment to these variables, right? But this is not, this. we do not need to do something like this for simultaneous state update. This has nothing to do with it. It's basically just writing this and avoiding, I guess, writing three equal signs. I don't know. I mean... Why? Why would you write something like this? This is much clearer. Okay, so this is how I think tuple unpacking is used incorrectly or in a non-Pythonic way in Python. The tuple unpacking isn't there for you to be able to define multiple variables on one line. That's not what it's for. Let's look at another example of where this simultaneous state update is very useful that we have the ability to do that using tuple unpacking. Let's look at a function that's going to generate the first n Fibonacci numbers. Remember that the Fibonacci numbers, the first two numbers are 0 and 1, and then thereafter every number that comes is the sum of the previous two numbers. So the next number here will be 0 plus 1, which is 1. Then the next one will be 1 plus 1, which is 2. Then 2 plus 1, which is 3. Then 2 plus 3, which is 5 then 3 plus 5, which is 8, then 5 plus 8, which is 13, etc., 21, and so on. Okay, you get the idea. So that's the Fibonacci sequence. And I want to write a function that's going to calculate the first n of those numbers. So if we want the first one, it should return 0. If we want two of them, it should return 0 and 1. And then it should return 0, 1, 1 if we want 3, and so on. 
So let's go ahead and write this. And we're going to create this function, fib, and it's going to be the number that we want returned. I'm going to put a little bit of just some sanity checks here. So if n is less than 1, or we don't have an instance of an int for n, then we're going to raise a value error. And we'll just say n must be an integer and at least 1, something like that. Okay. So that just makes sure that we have at least some valid input to our function. So the first, when we start at the beginning of the sequence, the first number is 0, the second number is 1. And then we're going to have to calculate the next number or the new number. So the new number, initially I'm just going to set it to 0, but that's just because I want to initialize it. And then we're going to say for underscore, so I don't really care about the actual iteration, you know, the loop value here. So that's why I use the underscore. And I'm going to, you know, basically yield what? Well, I'm going to yield the first number. So the first number is going to be zero. The first time this loop runs, right, it's going to yield first. And I'm using yield. This is another Pythonic trick. And I'll talk about that in a subsequent video on using generators and generator expressions to make your code more Pythonic. But here, by using a yield, I don't have to go through the extra steps of building up a list and appending to the list and then returning the list. That's a lot of extra code that I don't need to be writing. If someone wants a list out of these things, they can just call the function and make a list out of it by passing it to the list function. Much simpler than me doing all the work here on, on doing that. As well as being, of course, more memory efficient if somebody doesn't want the list or if somebody creates fib 10 million but only iterates through the first five elements, using a generator like this, using a yield, it's only, you know, incurred the penalty of calculating the first five Fibonacci numbers. All right. So anyways, that's why I'm using yield. Now, once it's yielded, it needs to calculate now what the new number is going to be. And basically, our, so if you think, right, initially, our first number is 0 and 1. Once we've yielded 0, what happens? The new number is going to be 0 plus 1. So the new number is going to be the first plus the second. Now the first number becomes what the second number was, right? We've, we're basically moving our, you know, think of this like an arrow pointing to whichever element we're on right now. We just yielded the first element. So now we move to the next one, which means the first element becomes 1 and the new number is 1. So the new number is first plus second. The first number is what the second number used to be. And now the second number is the new number, right? So I had to do it this way. I had to have this temp variable kind of. You could have think, you know, named this temp if you want. So temp equals first plus second. First equals second. And this is why I needed that because when I calculate the new number, I need the original first number, not the new first number, right? So that's why I had to do it this way. Okay, and that's it for the Fibonacci function. So now we can actually call, we can make a list out of it, and we can call fib, let's say, 8 to get the first 8. And of course, I got a bug somewhere, uh, not is instance, okay? So let's run that. So as you can see, we get 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, as expected. But now the way that we can use tuple unpacking allows us to get rid of this whole temp variable, which is very similar to how we were able to get rid of the temp variable when we did swapping, right, of the of uh, two variables. So I don't need this anymore. I'm still going to yield first. But then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, well, first and second. The first is equal to the original second. And the second, now, number is going to be the first plus the second. So this has a number of advantages writing it this way. One is that we get rid of this whole, you know, temporary variable that we had to have here. And then secondly, this is very expressive. This is very easy to understand that I'm taking the second number, the sum of the first and second number, and I'm assigning that to first and second. I mean, that doesn't get any easier 
ex you know, reading this code. Whereas here, you got to think a lot more about it. Okay. And so you end up with the same results. If we do list of fib8, we'll get exactly the same thing. Now, another very common use case for tuple unpacking is in for loops. When we're iterating over a sequence or an iterable of tuples or lists or things like that, and we want to extract the contents of the individual tuples, let's say, or lists into symbols. And this often happens, let's say, when you're dealing with dictionaries. So this is a great example. If we're going to create this dictionary, and then we want to loop over it. So let me just create it first, like so. So we've got this dictionary, and I want to loop over the keys and the values of the dictionary at the same time. Well, what we do is we use the dot items function. Again, I'll have a future idiomatic Python video on actual, you know, iterating over dictionaries and not using indexing when we're doing that. But that's going to be a separate video. So we can do this. We can say for, let's say, key underscore value. So this is a variable called key underscore value in d.items, right? That's what we use to iterate. And we're going to print, just print key value, like so. And as you can see, items basically is an iterable that returns tuples with the key as the first element and the value as the second element. So we could decide to unpack it. We could do it this way. So we could say key comma value is equal to key value. We're using unpacking. And then we could print an F string, let's say, and we could say key, uh, let's interpolate key equals value. So as you can see, we unpacked the tuple into two separate symbols, but the more Pythonic way of doing it is actually doing that directly in the for loop itself. So we'd say for key comma value in D dot items. And then we can have the same thing over here. We don't need to have a separate line of code to unpack that. We can unpack it directly in the for loop. We get the exact same result. So for more Pythonic code, do use tuple unpacking where it makes your code easier to write and read, like for example, in cases like this, or maybe where you actually need it to simplify simultaneous state updates, things like that. But do not use tuple unpacking simply to put very, you know, like a number of assignments, like a comma b comma c equals one comma two comma three. Don't write that. that I, in my mind, is not good Pythonic code. Instead, write it out line by line. So if it's just for setting multiple variables up, you don't use tuple unpacking. All right, thank you for watching.